Hello dear student, this is Dr. Sahar from Dentabats, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD, ADAT and AFK exam. So in this video, I have taken a topic of pediatric, the use of space maintainers in children. So this video, we are going to cover up the topic starting from why the space maintenance is needed. Then we'll discuss about the indications, contraindications of the use of space maintainers and the different types of space maintainers that can be used in different situations coming across. So first of all, let us see what's the definition of space maintenance. So space maintenance is defined as the measures or procedure that are brought into use due to premature loss of the primary tooth. So doing the space maintenance will help prevent the loss of arch length. Now the premature loss of a primary tooth can be due to trauma or it can be due to caries. So space maintainer can be a fixed or a removable appliance to maintain the space created by a premature loss of a tooth or multiple teeth. So why you require a space maintainer? So the space of premature loss tooth usually change in the following six months when the space starts closing. So sometimes a decrease in space may occur even within the days or within a few weeks, which may cause loss of arch length resulting in crowding of the permanent dentition, impaction of the permanent teeth if there is no much space available and aesthetic difficulty along with malocclusions and other problems. So, a space maintenance is required, the indication if the space shows the sign of closure. If the use of space maintainer will make the future orthodontic treatment less complicated for the child or if the need for treatment or malocclusion at a later date is not indicated. Also, space maintainer is used to avoid any supra eruption of the opposing tooth. Then the space should be maintained for two years or more to improve the masticatory function and restore the dental health. While the contraindication of a space maintainer is when you see the succedaneous tooth is about to erupt. So when you take the radiograph, you see the permanent tooth already has two thirds of the root developed. That means about to erupt then you don't need a space maintainer. When the space left is greater than needed for the permanent as indicated from the radiograph and if the space shows no sign of closing, or if the succedaneous tooth is not present below, then it does not require the use of space maintainer. The different factor influencing the planning for space maintainer is definitely the dental age of the patient, the time lapse since the loss, like when the tooth was actually lost between two weeks to six months. If you are within the six month, then space maintainer creates more sense. However, if more than six months have already lost, uh, already passed, then use of space maintainer may not be that helpful because that means already some space loss has happened. So in that case, you have to do the space regaining first and then you can maintain the space. Also, factor influencing the space maintainer is decided on the sequence of eruption of the teeth or if there is chances of delayed eruption of the permanent teeth. So how you classify the space maintainer? According to the function, like functional space maintainer or non-functional space maintainer, functional space maintainer will have the artificial teeth attached to them. According to activity, the active space maintainer or the passive one, they do not bring any tooth movement. According to retention, you can have fixed space maintainer, semi-fixed or removable one. So, what are different commonly used space maintainer we have? Bandle loop, crown and loop, lingual arch, nas palatal arch, trans palatal arch, distal shoe space maintainer and the removable space maintainer. So, this is the picture of bandle loop. So bandle loop, we know it's the most commonly used space maintainer we have. It's a unilateral fixed appliance. So if you have a unilateral loss of the premature loss of the tooth, like your primary first molar, you are using this bandle loop. You can see first molar is lost prematurely here. You're putting a band around it that will maintain the space. Uh, so the first space maintainer we do is the bandle loop. It's a very commonly used space maintainer. It's a unilateral appliance on the one side of the arch. It is mainly used in posterior segment when there is a premature loss of the primary molar. But if the patient have high caries experience, you cannot use this. It is a non-functional appliance. So you can see here, this is the loop that is maintaining the space for the premature loss of the primary first molar in this case. And then you can see this is the band that is surrounding your second molar. Now the next one we have is the crown and loop. So in this also you have a loop that is maintaining the space created by premature loss of the primary molar. But instead of a band surrounding, there is a crown that you put on the tooth which is 
distal to the space used as an abutment. So, this crownal loop will be stronger than bandal loop and cementation failure loss chances are less likely. So, if the tooth distal to the space loss also need a restoration, crownal loop is a very good choice. The next one we have the lingual arch appliance. Lingual arch appliance is used for the multiple premature loss of the primary molars on both the sides. So, it is a bilateral appliance we have. It can also carry out minor movement of anterior teeth maintaining the leeway space. But the most important thing about the lingual arch appliance is that you cannot place this appliance until your permanent incisors have not erupted. So, once the permanent mandible incisors are erupted, then only you can use this appliance because you can see the wire of this appliance goes lingually and touches the cingulum of the anterior mandibular. So, if you are putting it in the primary incisor, once the permanent are about to come, they will get trapped under the wire. So, this indication is very important. You can only use lingual arch once the permanent mandible incisors have erupted. Now, you can see the another one here. Now, the another appliance we have is a Nance palatal arch appliance and this appliance is for maxillary when you have multiple premature loss of the primary molars. So, it can be used bilaterally. Again, you can see so it is simple maxillary lingual arch but does not contact the anterior teeth. That is how it is different from the uh, lingual holding arch appliance that we see for the mandibular. But it does have an acrylic button you can see in the mid palatal area and you can use it along with the habit breaking appliance. The next one is the transpalatal arch appliance. So, transpalatal arch appliance can be used like a nance. Advantage is that there is no acrylic button in the interior because acrylic button can be irritating to the patient. So, it is more cleansable. But disadvantage is that there is a lack of interior stop here. So, that can lead to possible tooth shift. It can also bring some minor tooth movement in the interiors when it is activated. Then we have the distal shoe appliance. Distal shoe appliance is very important. We always have questions on it. So, distal shoe appliance is indicated when your primary second molar is lost before the eruption of permanent first molar. That is the indication of distal shoe. So, you can see the picture here. This is like a crown that you are putting here. Then you can see this is the distal shoe actually, the extension that is coming out. And this extension will go and touch. Now, we are coming to the next appliance that is distal shoe appliance. It is a very important appliance. We always have questions on it. So, this appliance is used when the primary second molar has lost before the eruption of permanent first molar. So, if you do not maintain or save the space, what will happen once the permanent first molar erupts, it is going to take the space of the primary second molar. So, there will be no space for the premolars to erupt there. So, you are using this distal shoe design, you can see you are putting a crown both on the primary canine and the primary first molar and this is the space of primary second molar which is lost prematurely. Now, you can see there is a distal shoe extension that is coming out from this primary first molar crown and this distal shoe will guide the eruption of your permanent first molar. So, it comes right into the space erect. It does not go measly into the space of primary second molar so that the permanent second premolar can erupt normally into its space. But once permanent premolar are about to erupt, you need to remove this distal shoe extension. Otherwise, it can damage the permanent premolar to the bud below. Let the consideration we have in the use of space maintainer. It is very important for us to take the x-ray while we are doing the distal shoe to be sure about the length, the position of the permanent premolar and the position of unerupted molar, first molar. So, you can replace it with the entire space maintainer once your permanent first molar, see, has erupted. So, it, you can convert it into a crown and loop actually once the first molar has erupted. Now, reumbal space maintainer can be non-functional or the functional type like a reumbal partial denture. So, not only is the mesodistal space maintained but also the vertical space is maintained with this reumbal partial denture. Of course, it will, it's like a denture so it has the artificial teeth so it is restoring your masticatory function. Speech and aesthetic improvement is also seen. You can see the picture here. But the unilateral space maintainer are not as indicated because you can see they are small and they have always have choking dangers for the children. So let us conclude this video by doing some quick cases. So, in this case, if you can see the mandibular right first primary molar 
is missing due to the premature loss here. In your judgment, is the child in the need of space maintain and what you are going to use? So in case of the premature loss of primary first molar, in this case, we can use a bandal loop space maintainer. So you can see there is a band surrounding the primary second molar and a loop that is maintaining the space of uh, premature loss of primary first molar so that the permanent first premolar can come right into the space. Because if you don't do the space maintenance, what will happen? The teeth, this primary second molar is going to drift measly into this space and close the space. Now, in this drawing, we can see there are multiple anterior teeth which is missing in a child, four-year-old. So, do we need a space maintainer here? Do we need a removable or a fixed? Since child is just four-year-old, a removable is not a good idea. So, we give a fixed processes here, which is going to replace all the missing anterior teeth here. You can see the picture here. This is a fixed appliance. Because child is just four-year-old, it is still time for the permanent incisors to erupt the max region. So let us do a quick synopsis here. So if the tooth missing is incisor, if there is a premature loss of primary incisor, usually you don't need any space maintainer because at most it can just lead to some localized space loss, but there is no loss in the arch length here. So no consequences. However, if incisors are lost just prior to primary canine eruption, it may require a space maintenance. The primary first molar is lost prematurely. As we discussed, we are using band and loop or a crown and loop, which will prevent the loss of our dimension. If there is a primary canine, especially if there is a premature loss of primary mandibular canine, that can lead to your midline shift and distal lingual collapse of the permanent mandibular incisors. So it is important for us to decrease the possibility of the midline shift. We can extract the other side primary mandibular canine too. Now, if there is a primary second molar which is lost prematurely, we already discussed we are going to use a distal shoe space maintainer because it will guide both the permanent first molar and the premolar to erupt into the right position. It will prevent any loss in the arch dimension.